All right, we are live. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Wisdom and Wanderlust. Um, as always, I am your host, Michael Bennett, co-founder of ExploreX. Uh, today, I'm joined by my colleague, Robin Goldblatt. Um, and on behalf of Robin, uh, myself, and the rest of the ExploreX team around the world, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And uh, we're really, really excited uh, and honored to have our good friend, Hannah Gresser, with us today. Um, where we're going to talk about the concept of no mud, no lotus, uh, and what that means to her, what that means for our lives, how we can use that to not only travel better, but live better. So we're going to dive into that in a minute. Uh, before we dive into that, um, a couple quick notes for you. If you are new to ExploreX, don't know much about who we are and what we do, we would invite you to cruise on over to our website, explorer-x.com, to learn more about who we are what makes us so special and, and how you can get involved with all that we're doing, including our new community. So we recently launched a community platform. Um, we're constantly, uh, our colleague Amanda is working on building out new and more robust uh, benefits, products and, and offerings in our membership platform. So um, cruise on over to membership uh, to see and learn, to learn more about the membership, excuse me, go to explore-x.com slash join. And you can learn more about all the amazing benefits that we have. And again, we're revamping that, looking to launch uh, brand new uh, with lots of new stuff in January. So stay tuned for more and you can see what's coming on the website now. Um, if you have any questions, if you wanna say hello, connect with us, talk about travel, talk about life, talk about whatever. We love talking to our community members. We love talking to travelers, especially now when traveling is so um, challenging for most of us. So feel free to give us a shout uh, at, uh, the, our phone numbers on our website. Um, you can always email us at hello at explorer-x.com. And of course, follow us on social media at go explorer x. Awesome. Hey, you guys, um, Robin here. <laughs> um, I just have a few housekeeping items for us before we get started. Um, we are gonna try and keep this as close to an hour as possible. Um, we are currently recording and we will be throughout and then we'll be sending this um, via email to all those who registered afterwards. And if you have any questions throughout, um, please don't hesitate to just pop them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and we will answer those throughout. Awesome. Thanks, Robin. Um, okay, so today we have the honor and pleasure of having uh, our good friend Hannah Gresser join us for our conversation, our Wisdom and Wanderlust today. Um, Hannah is someone that we've connected with really over the past year and developed a really, really beautiful relationship with. Um, we're going to be working with her on lots of courses and workshops and coaching opportunities for our community in the future. Um, a little bit about Hannah before we get started. She's a trained yoga instructor, licensed massage therapist, uh, group leader, travel group leader. Uh, she coaches clients. She is a plant medicine enthusiast. And all in all, just a real beacon of light in this world. So Hannah, it's awesome to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Michael and Robin. It's such a pleasure to be here. And it has been such a great relationship with Explorer X so far. And um, yeah, it's wonderful to be here to talk about No Mud, No Lotus and transforming these trials of travel that can come into treasures that we all are seeking on our purpose for travel and in our lives. So, uh, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I can't wait to dive in. And we, you know, you and I have had <laughs> lots of conversations over the yeah. past year and they always yeah. meander and evolve into these really awesome, inspiring discussions. So excited to see where we, where we end up today. <laughs> Who knows? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it'll be on topic. <laughs> yeah, maybe it will be. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, we'll end up in the jungles of someplace. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so you're doing some really interesting stuff and I want to get into your, your background and have you sort of maybe walk us through your, your life because I, I find it so intriguing and fascinating and interesting. Um, but maybe, so know, however you want to do that, but I'd love to, love to somehow incorporate what you're doing right now because I find it so wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as for myself, I mean, my, my journey starts many, many, many years back. I've, I started, I was always kind of a, a seeker in the sense of exploring different religions, different um, areas of the United States. I would travel a lot with my uncle growing up and then I eventually ended up um, traveling with my father to Brazil a few times and in college and 
And all of these, the trips that I have taken have actually formed me into being who I am today and the, the difficulties of those, those journeys and the constant seeking of who am I, what am I doing here and what is it that I want for my life? And I realizing how much um, that travel actually shaped that for me. And today um, I ended up uh, after college, moving across the United States and then up and down the United States and then eventually ended up in Costa Rica working at a few different um, health and wellness retreat centers. And I'm currently in the Poconos of Pennsylvania, working at um, an ashram and retreat center called the Himalayan Institute. And the Himalayan Institute was founded in 1969 by Swami Rama of the Himalayas. And the entire purpose of the Institute was to um, merge yogic philosophy and science. So really knowing that the, the, the science of yoga, the science of breath and um, creating that into something that Western, that's palpable and a Westerners are able to, to realize. I love it. I love it. And you, so you're, you're, you know, we call this wisdom and wanderlust. Your sense yeah. of wanderlust seems like it was developed and curated pretty early on with traveling to Brazil and everything else, right? Say, say more yeah. about what that was like and where that came from. Yeah. So in my early life, what travel really did was open my eyes to other perspectives and other ways of being. And growing up in on the East Coast of the United States, I kind of had blinders on. And when I traveled to Brazil as a teenager, it really just opened my mind, expanded my mind to possibilities of other ways of being, of other ways of life, of so much more compassion, so much more curiosity to what is out in the world than what I actually thought of was, you know, in a 16 year old's mind, what is, what is life? And when I, when I left, you know, got on the airplane and left and was on the beaches of Brazil and exploring different types of dance and different types of language and being, um, it just, opened up my mind to, well, if this is possible, what else is possible? And so that really sparked a fire in my heart to continue to travel to Central and South America. I spent, um, I was a assistant for a course in the universe, for the University of Maryland of medicinal plants of the Amazon. And we took students down to the Amazon and I continued to kind of pass that on to the students that we, we brought of just this expanding of mine of, you know, the difference of the jungle to what the forest is on the East Coast and um, in Maryland. <laughs> yeah, so that, that treasure, that treat that I had when I was so young of expanding, of, of just being so much more aware of uh, possibilities of curiosity really has created who I am now. Yeah. yeah. Now you're, you're obviously into, um, I'm not sure if you would call it more spiritual type philosophies and interests right you know yes. yoga and massage therapy and meditation breath work, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. um as you mentioned plant medicine like where was that something that you were sort of born into or is that something that just sort of emerged through your travels and your experiences through life um it came at a really young age with really enjoying catholic, uh, catholic churches <laughs> And when going into different cathedrals and exploring, I grew up in, right outside of Washington, D.C., and so the National Cathedral and just being in awe of walking into these spaces of, of sublime architecture and feeling a feeling inside of me of, of I didn't know what it was when I was that young. And it was continuing, actually the travel was continuing to try to find that same feeling of connection and trying to explore, well, is it in a place? And my father has a story he tells when I, the first time I walked into the National Cathedral, I said, does God live here? And I kind of looked around wow. and it was like, oh, you know, and not, you know, I don't believe that God or spirit or whatever you want to call it lives in a certain place, but it's actually cultivated inside of us. And through travel and through breaking of habits and through pattern interruptions, um, we can really realize our full potential. And um, a lot of times that comes with running into walls or going on wandering paths and, and not even knowing what we don't know and mm -hmm. allowing our travels uh, to teach us those lessons that we may not have even thought to learn. Hmm. I love it. I love it. So what, what, did you, <laughs> what did you discover and learn about the idea of connection? Oh, about connection. Um, well, 
when I was, as I was traveling, especially when I was younger, I learned how to connect with people from all different walks of life and not just people that even spoke my own language. Cause there were many times when I was immersed in other cultures that I didn't speak the language. I really didn't know what was going on. And I would, I was kind of just present and it was a, um, a realization that words weren't needed to connect. Understanding wasn't necessarily even needed to connect, but presence was needed to connect. And in that presence of, of total, sometimes it was total chaos or total, you know, just complete unknown. Um, in those moments, I actually felt connected to my, myself because that was all I really had was my breath and me. <laughs> and yeah. It reminds me of what you're saying. It reminds me of a scene um, from The Alchemist and it's been a little while since I read it and here I claim it's my favorite book. I should know this, but where there, where there's two people having a conversation and they realize after a while that they're actually speaking different languages, but they're, yeah. able to, they, they're able to understand one another just through, you know, nonverbal cues and body language and just sort of tone and all of those things. And just, you know, coming from that, that place and space in your heart and the energy that you're putting out there and all of that stuff. Exactly. Exactly. And being able to, to feel that and to lean into what we're, what we're feeling and know that that's, that's where the real connection comes from. Connection to our soul and to our, to our sense of self and who, who do I think that I am? And that was another big one that came, came in with travel is that I would, I would be traveling around and I would have this idea of who Hannah is and oh I'm this and I do this job and I'm this but then I would be thrown I would choose to to travel into another situation and none of that mattered and when we remove all these layers of our identity of our job of our partner of our work of where we live of our country even what's left and that what is left is the essence of 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 breath of life and again this continuing wanderlust that I have to um to seek it and it's not necessary to travel but it's really fun too <laughs> yeah 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 well and i love that right it's not necessary to travel but it it's oh. certainly it's well not only is it fun but i think it does expedite the the, the peeling away of these layers right of oh yeah way of, of all of that in a way that is yeah more more prominent than it would be at home exactly and a lot of times with travel like i said before sometimes we don't even know what we don't know and sometimes we don't know the lessons that we that would be best for us. And sometimes we don't know what, you know, I thought was best for me. I thought what was going to make me happy actually didn't, or I went and I experienced that and I was like, well, maybe that, that wasn't it. And the way that travel does it, it kind of just takes you and it shakes you upside down and nothing that's not you <laughs> remains, you know, all your coins fall out of your pocket, your glasses fall off, you know, and then you, right. you stand up and you're like, whoa, this is life. <laughs> right, right, right. I love that. I, just the visual of that is awesome. You know, yeah. the, there's a, there's a, uh, something I, I'll get into like very quick academic yeah, theory lecture mode, but like there's this whole, I don't know where, and if I knew where it came from or where, who I got it from, I would, I would give them credit, but I don't, but there's this whole idea that we sort of go through four steps uh, from like beginning to mastery. Right. And yeah. level one is, I don't know how much I don't know, right? And sort of that ignorant bliss, like, yeah, this can't be that bad. I'll figure it out, like, blah, 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 you know, no problem. <laughs> and then you get to step two where you realize, how you, I know how much I don't know, right? And you're like overwhelmed by the, oh, crap, like, this is going to be really difficult. And that's when a lot of people peel away. Mm -hmm. When you stick with it, you know, long enough, you'll get to step three, which is, I actually don't know how much I know, where you've actually become really good at it, but you still think you're not as great. And then finally, you know, again, stick with it longer, you get to level four where it's mastery, where it's like, I know how much I know, and I'm sort of capable, confident, and, and, and able to lean into this. So, yeah, anyway, love that. I also want to, um, yeah. do you, are you familiar with the story of the, the golden Buddha? Yes, but I would love for you to tell it because I'm sure all the listeners would love you, to hear it. This is one of my favorite. probably tell it way better than I did. No, go for it. You brought it up. I right, want well, to hear it. Well, okay, I will. But in <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I first, Sorry. I first wonderful heard teaching from uh, an awesome video um, documentary called Finding Joe. So those of you that have been following along, you, you've heard us talk about Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey a ton, uh, something I'm super passionate about. And so there's a movie or documentary, whatever you want to call it, called Finding Joe, which is about the hero's journey and, and the life work of Joseph Campbell. 
check it out. It's awesome. Um, anyway, at the, the beginning scene of the movie, there's a, a gentleman in there and he's speaking about this idea of the golden Buddha. And it's that this ancient, everything's ancient, right? I feel like everything's ancient, but let's just call it ancient uh, tribe uh, or, or monks, uh, community of monks in Thailand. Um, uh, we're living peacefully. They had this beautiful 50 foot statue of a golden Buddha. They, they worshiped and prayed to and hung out with and whatever every day. And it was this beautiful thing. And then a civil war broke out and an invading tribe was coming through and they were going to destroy, you know, their entire community. And so what they did is they put lots of mud all over the golden Buddha to protect it. And so that these, the invaders would be like, all right, this is just some worthless, mud statue of whatever right and we're just gonna not destroy it and move on well the civil war lasted about 50 years according to the story and so a lot of the monks passed right or were killed or whatever and the new monks came along but they had no idea that under this layer of mud was a golden buddha and until one day one young monk was out there um meditating and he happened to like lean against this statue and a piece of the piece of the mud that had dried uh broke off and he saw this little glimmer of gold underneath. And so they caught all the monks out and they started chipping away at it and chipping away at it. And they realized after a couple of days and they uncovered this entire beautiful golden, golden Buddha statue. And so you know, the, 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 the story there, right? The, 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 the lesson is that we all, as you were saying earlier, Hannah, right? We all have this golden essence inside of us. And yet years of socialization and normalization and societal expectations and pressures and all of these things sort of accumulate and they can if we let them and oftentimes we do it un unknowingly build up and sort of hide who we really are right it's a mask for us and it takes a lot of work at times to really go and begin to chip away at that and get back to that beautiful core essence of who we are yeah did I do it any kind of justice? Or that, that was that was so good. No, no, no. That was so good. I was going to say, and I'm pretty sure that's a true story. Really? See, that I, I, yeah, I wasn't I'm, sure. I, I, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it's a true story. And, you know, we, we have these layers of mud that we pack around our golden Buddha in order to protect ourselves. So yeah. they all, there's a, there was a purpose why we, you know, mm. the purpose why they yes. covered the Buddha with mud. There's the purpose why we have these patterns that we have. Yes. And um, the concept of this no mud, no lotus. And also something you said earlier, Michael, was to lean in to this, to leaning, leaning into the uncomfort, leaning into our mud and leaning into all of that into, in order to transform it. I mean, we've got to chip it away first of all, we have to know we're wearing mud and then we've got to chip it away, but leaning into that process. And, um, and actually in these days, my, uh, a theme that's been recurring is enjoying that process, enjoying mm. discovering like, oh my gosh, I'm covered in mud. Whoa, that's pretty, let's, you know, this, let's make this a fun process of uncovering. Right. And my favorite spiritual text is Harry Potter. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I can't remember what book it is, but in Harry Potter, there's one of the books where there is a, a Bogart, which is um, a, a little creature that basically, if you stand in front of it, it comes up to be the scariest thing in your mind. So if I was scared of spiders, it would come up to be a big spider. If I was scared of, you know, waves, ocean waves, it would become an ocean wave. And the way that you actually dispelled this bug art in Harry Potter was you, you well obviously you'd have your magic wand first but you'd say ridiculous and then you'd laugh at it and the laughter and this joy and calling it ridiculous was actually what caused it to go away and um, turn into something that was funny and and create you know from the scariest thing of your life to something that's oh, that's comical and that's the process over and over and over again from this transforming from what sometimes we can look at our lives and be like, whoa, this is a huge pile of mud. <laughs> you know, if we're, it, on a nice day, on a nice day, we can call it a huge pile of mud. And, right. then, <laughs> and, then, and then realize that we have the tool, that we can use the tools, utilize tools, um, such as breath work, such as um, yoga, meditation, um, travel, to create what we want in our lives, hence the lotus, or, yeah. um, you know, the funny part of the Bogart. Right, right, right. Well, so, so two quick things. One is, I, yeah. I don't know if you know this, but before um, Jake and I launched Explore X, I had a travel company that was called Muddy Shoe Adventures. Yeah. And the whole idea was exactly this. It was like, you know, being willing to one, get muddy, 
right? So, and and stop, stop carrying around this shield of perfection and like, you know, like invincibility and be like, we have to get real. Like, let's dive yeah. into that. Let's intentionally like, anyway. So you, you I thought you would connect with that. The other thing yeah. that, and, you know, I, I do a lot of reading as a lot of us do and, uh, and podcast listening. And one of the things that somebody was talking about the other, the other day, I'm reading this book. Um, this book will make you dangerous by Trip Lanier. Um, and I was listening to his podcast, uh, inspired by this, this book. And he gave this, 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 this perspective busting sort of a, a story or, 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 or whatever you want to call it, right. Where it's talking about taking yourself so seriously. Right. And the, the ridiculous and the thing. Right. And he's like, you know, we then bear with me as I go through this again, right. Cause I'll probably cock yeah, it up. Please, but it's fine, it <laughs> right. But like what he was saying was that, you know, so the, 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 you could fit 1.3 million earths inside the sun. Right. And then if you shrank the sun down to the size of a period on your computer, right. That the earth then would be the size of the Milky way. Right. And so that's one galaxy, right? So that's how like one little dot on the end of your pen is the, is the, is the sun and then the rest of the actual earth. Right. So how big our galaxy is. Right. Um, and then there are 180 billion galaxies in the universe or something like that. So there's some, just, just some like <laughs> mind blowing, like how, how infinitely small we are and how like having a sense of perspective and laughing at ourselves and, and, you know, just, just taking a deep breath and all of that can help yeah. us reset and just, just appreciate what we have. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have you enjoy- guys read the, the book when things fall apart? I'm actually currently reading that right now. And it's about like leaning into those times of Mm. stress and uncertainty and Pima children, correct? Yeah. 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 Oh, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, Just what you're talking about, how like if you, if you face what it is that you fear, somehow it just becomes, it dissolves. It becomes less of kind of this problem that you've made bigger in your mind. And it's, yeah. It's, there's a bunch of different like books and things that all kind of talk about the same subject. So I think mm-hmm. that's interesting. One, one of the things that I've found and, and Hannah, I'm going to hand this over to you in 10 no, seconds, okay. but like, <laughs> is, and just talking about this last night was, you know, I, I often, I, I'm a, I'm a, a, a pitta, right? So like, I, I am fiery. Like I, right there with you. <laughs> are you? Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I can get triggered and I know this about myself like very, very easily by something, right? One little thing and I'll be totally cool, calm and boom, I get triggered, right? But I know now after years of practice that like, all right, the best thing for me is just disconnect for 30 seconds or three seconds or, or 30 minutes and just focus on breathing, right? And that really gets me grounded and brings me back. So that's a transition to you and the work that you're focusing now on, which is breath work, right? Absolutely. Yep. And uh, so that pause that you just mentioned is, is perfect. And that's exactly what this, what breath can do. It can kind of almost expand these pauses to allow for our nervous system to just settle down a little bit for our body to, our body is our, our most wise a teacher and our and a tool that we can use, and when we give it space and enough nourishment and oxygen, it 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 does it of itself. You know the 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 healing happens in and of itself when we give it the right conditions. And a lot of us, especially in uh, the world that we're living in right now, breath is short. It's rapid. It's quick. It's it's almost like a, like a panting dog. Sometimes I'll be out in public and it's this this clenching up of, of our, of our breath. And, and now that we have to wear masks, I mean, now, you know, it's nice to see your face. We we're on webinar format. I don't have to wear a mask with you, but um, you know, even the mask, it, it limits our ability to breathe comfortably, to breathe deeply. If I breathe too deep, then my mask gets all moist. If it's, you know, it's just not, it's not a comfortable thing that we're, that we're dealing with. But even in that uncomfortable of wearing a mask of, of the climate of, what is our earth at this moment, we can still tap back into our breath. So that being said, I, um, I invite you and Robin and everyone else tuned in um, to, to join me for a little breath exercise that we're going to do here to just take about five minutes or so. And um, yeah, I'd like to 
have everyone first sit in their chair or lay down or wherever you are and kind of just get comfortable. And I always recommend sitting up straight, feet on the ground, but if you're lying down, that's fine too. And begin by closing your eyes and just notice where, you're, where you are in your body at this moment before we breathe. So checking in to your heart rate, to maybe the breathing rate, where are you breathing? What, is it, what does it feel like to be sitting in this chair? You start to question in and maybe even scan your body a bit. Are there areas of tension or areas of tightness or areas of flowing? Just take a, take a moment to scan all the way down from the bottoms of your feet to the top of your head. And in this stillness, I'm going to introduce to you five qualities of breath that these five qualities can be observed and cultivated wherever you are, anywhere on the planet, as long as you have breath. And these five qualities are our kind of ideal way to breathe, to calm our nervous system, to relax the mind and actually create the connection of, of bringing the mind back into the body. And I know for myself too, especially when I'm on stressful days, it's like my mind is out of my body and I don't even realize sometimes that I have to, I'm thirsty or I'm tired or I need to use the bathroom. And so we can use our breath to come back, bring our mind back into our bodies. And the first quality of breath, I invite you to place one hand on your chest and one hand on your stomach. And the first quality is deep breathing. So filling your lungs completely. So filling your lungs in your chest, but also in your belly. So even pressing your belly out into your hand and creating a really deep breath and filling your lungs all the way. Not so much that you're straining or needing to, but just filling up to capacity and then gently letting go. We often, again, when stress comes in and the nervous system acts up, we shorten our breaths. And so just intentionally deepening the breath, deepening the location of the breath down into the belly. There's nowhere else you have to be, nothing else you have to be doing at this moment, just deepening your breath. And the next quality I invite you to, to cultivate is smooth breath. So noticing if there's any choppiness or hesitation as you breathe in and out of your chest and stomach. Are there any areas that it gets stuck or it kind of feels like it's a little um, sticky? Just breathe into those spaces and allow them to soothe and smooth out. Keeping our breath deep and keeping our breath smooth. And the next quality is even. So for this exercise, keeping the breaths the inhales and the exhales, as similar length of time as possible. So breathing in the same amount of time, breathing out the same amount of time. It may be helpful to count. You can count to three or five or whatever your deep breath is.
Uh, a quick interruption. This is all in and out through the nose. Is that correct? This can be through the nose or through the mouth, but it would be best if you can and if it's comfortable and if you don't have a, a stuffy nose, in through the nose and out through the nose. Thank you. But it can be either whichever one feels better for you, but it's nice to, to if you can, through the nose. Thanks. Thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. And so even, deep, smooth breaths. And the next quality is quiet. So there are lots of different types of breath work and, and exercises that we do that require a noisy breath or, a, or a, a sound to be made when we breathe. But the goal of this one is to be as silent and as smooth and as quiet as possible. It's really feeling the sweetness of the deep, smooth, even, and quiet breath. And the last quality is to breathe without pausing. So breathing, so removing the pause, if there is one at the, in, at the top of the inhale and removing the pause at the bottom of the exhale. So having it be a continuous wheel of motion, just like life. There's never a moment in life that anything is actually ever completely still. So we can use this, this motion of flowing with the waves of in and out and removing any pauses or gasping that we may feel at the top or the bottom of our breath. When we have these five qualities of deep smooth, even, without sound, and without pause. Feel what it is to be in your body with the breath. And this is the connection. This is the space of transformation. The awareness of the inhales and the exhales. Feeling the breath the warm air flow out of your nostrils and the cool air as you breathe in. Remembering that these qualities are available to you at any time, any moment. And when you're ready, begin to bring your awareness back into your full body into the room that you're in, the place that you're in. And notice the difference now in your body, in your breath, and in your mind. And I would love if anybody would like to share their comments of, of how they're feeling of anything that, that happens for them during that. That was, <clears throat> that was great, Anna. Thank you. You're welcome. You'll be able to, um, and we'll we'll share the recording. Yeah. With everyone, um, but can you? Is there some place we can find those five? Yeah, I can email you. Yeah. yeah. I can email you for sure. Yeah, and, then and we'll include that in the in the notes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's so beautiful to have the simplicity of just touching base with the breath again, because it can shift. I think that was maybe five minutes or, or six minutes that we were doing that. And the shift that I felt in my body from just five minutes of breathing is, is, is monumental. And this is where, this is where the transformation happens. This is where our treasures come in. Yeah. Yeah. Being able to sit in the, in the transformational fire and continue to breathe. <clears throat> I mentioned this earlier, but I was uh, talking to Lauren about this last night, and it 
I wonder, I mean, this this was, as you said, six minutes, and I, I think we all, you know, I feel like I'm like, ooh, like this is way, way more tranquilo than it was five minutes ago, right? But like, <laughs> what's the, is there, is there a, an amount of time, like, you know, even if you just do like three or 10 or whatever that, that from a physiological standpoint, like we begin to see or feel results? Um physiologically it's almost in, it can be instant okay. i mean it can be instant and and sometimes i know with my practice that there are times when i can drop into this tranquilo this right back into you know alignment of my mind body and and spirit through breath really quickly and then there are other days that it takes a bit longer you know and and that's that's okay <laughs> that's just where it is and and I know that in this really busy world of all of us are um, probably, you know, just have lots going on and even a moment of pause. Um, sometimes I do it um, washing my hands because I, I wash my hands pretty often here at the Institute and um, it's a thing that I'm doing all the time. So it's something that's like, okay, so I'm washing my hands. What's my breath like? Or what's uh you know how's my stomach feeling am i breathing into my stomach and not you know even tapping into three of the five qualities mm. can can create a physiological change in the body in that moment and um i i love uh holotropic breathing and wim hof is one of my my favorite favorite teachers and he he talks about this this it's literally a physiological change that happens in reducing the acidity in the body when we have enough enough oxygen and when we're exhaling all of the talk i mean when we're fully exhaling and when we're fully inhaling it physiologically changes our body to be less acidic and less fiery less reactive and um it takes minutes or seconds even sometimes and for the the change that we wish to see in the world starting with us can start with our breath and it's free <laughs> and it's available everywhere. And that's why it's my favorite travel tool is breath work. Mm. Because whether you're sitting on a long bus ride or you're waiting for a train or you're in an uncomfortable situation, the awareness being brought back into the body, into the breath um, is accessible at any time. Uh, I love it. I have so many questions for you and we could, we could go for a while. And, we'll, and just as, again, a quick <laughs> plug, you know, yeah. starting in January, part of our, our new membership platform and program is going to include, or community, I should say, um, is going to include courses, workshops, and things like that. So we and our community will have a chance to work with you and to dive even deeper into this and really have you guide us through a much more robust, not just a conversation, but yeah. like an actual program and, and, and learning uh, opportunity. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. There's a, so again, I, I, I mentioned like, it would be great if you can send us those five keys. If there are any other resources in the meantime, you know, I know you, again, you work at the Himalayan Institute. If there's courses there that, about breath work that people might be interested in, please feel free to send that over. We'll, we'll link yeah. it to everyone. And I've, <clears throat> everyone knows who's been listening. I, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, the website optimize.me. Um, they've got some great tools and resources. So, uh, and they just came out with like their top three books based on different subjects. Breath work is one of them. So, uh, Robin, let's be sure to include some of those links to some of those books, uh, as well, just to give people as much, uh, as many resources as possible. Yeah, we have a book here that's published by our, um, we have an Himalayan Institute press and, um, it's called the science of breath and diving into the different tech techniques in breath. And, and what we did here today was, was a really simple, um, simple uh, relaxation technique. And there are so many different things, different ways of breathing, different um, ways of, of tweaking that process to achieve, um, you know, balancing of energy, of raising of energy. If we're tired in the afternoon, there's different breath works that we can do. Instead of drinking our afternoon cup of coffee, you can sit and do five minutes of of a certain kind of breathing that actually brings in the energy, the prana, the life force into our body in, instead of having to consume whatever it is that we, we choose to consume. Yeah. yeah. I love so that, that will definitely could be coming in our, in the, in the courses to come and as well as 
as available um, to those who, who, have, who are new to breath work and have never thought about utilizing our, our greatest tool is our body. Yeah, <laughs> no, I love it. And, and, you know, again, not surprisingly so much alignment, you know, one of the things that people have heard us talk about over and over, over again uh, on, these, on these webinars is <clears throat> the idea of energetic foundations, right? And how people will travel, they'll go on a trip, they'll come back, they'll feel inspired to take action and to do things. And yet what I hear constantly is, well, okay, but I'm tired, I'm fatigued, I don't have enough energy, I'm not eating the right food, I'm not sleepy enough, right? I'm not breathing, yeah. I'm not meditating. I'm not... And yeah. so their ability to actually integrate and apply and take some of these actions is eliminated, you know, compromised at best or, or just completely off the, off, the, off the table at, at worst because they just, yeah. so I love that idea of just focusing on the energy and, and giving yourself other ways to, to build up besides caffeine or. All the things that we use in this culture. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Was, and. Oh, God, sorry. Part, no, I was going to ask you about the difference between, or if there is one or how you differentiate or distinguish between breath work and meditation? Um, they can be one in the same. Um, and breath work can be a, a certain type of meditation. Um, and it, it all depends on how you define them. But for me, in my mind, um, it's both. <laughs> They're both the same. And um, breath work may be a little bit more intentional with using the breath, but the, the goal of both of them typically is to uh, calm and quiet the mind and to realign um, the mind, body, and, and spirit. Yeah. Love it. So. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually find that most, when I, what I call meditations, the, the most <clears throat> powerful ones for me are ones where I typically just end up in a very, very deep breath flow and breath work, you know, yeah. and just, yeah. and I just, and, and versus Anyway. Yeah. I mean, years ago, if you had told me to sit down, you know, sit cross-legged on a, on a cushion and to, to stare at, you know, or to close my eyes and to be still, it would have, there's no way <laughs> that wouldn't have happened. And there's so many different kinds of meditation for, for all of us, you know, it's, there's, there's different ways. And for me, I find that breath work is a really, really powerful and quick way to get there. Um, Cause there were times where I'd sat for 45 minutes on a cushion and I'm like, man, <laughs> my mind is still going crazy. I'm still not feeling good, but, but with breath work, it's just, it's, it's quick. It can, it can get us there. It can get, especially for people that have, uh, um, scheduled lifestyles. Um, something that I add in since I've been, I've been working a lot here at the, at the Institute. Um, mm -hmm. I've really had to schedule in my breath work and I'll take five minutes, a couple times a day to just bring it back, um, and make sure that, um, it's these little adjustments that we do. You know, and I totally understand and empathize with so many people who are having trouble um, to sticking to meals and sleep and all these things that we learn on our travels, like, oh man, I really want to spend more time with family or I want to eat a certain way or live a certain way and then come back to um, their home life and just feel like, I can't keep any of these, you know, or, you know, and, and doing, not doing instead of, and just feeling like it's kind of an explosion. But what I've found in my life is that it's the little course corrections over time, the, the little things that we can do, these little pieces that we can really integrate into our lives, whether that's drinking. For me recently, it's been drinking enough water. Am I drinking enough water every day? And, and just a little thing of drinking water, and then that becomes a habit. So then that one never, doesn't need to be so upfront in my mind. And so then it's eating. And then these little course corrections, instead of trying to make 10,000 changes at once, so I encourage or, or one massive change or one massive change. Like I'm going to just quit my job and go live in a bus or something. <laughs> Who yeah, knows? Right. You know, we don't need to do any of those to, to feel the peace and happiness. It, it can really come where we are right now in this moment. And that's what I really want all of the listeners. And I'm reminding myself too, that it doesn't have to be um, anything that's, that's this, whoa huge thing it can it's these little changes and these little moments of peace that we can cultivate yeah <clears throat> I, know, I love it and i think two important reminders there right? one is on a day-to-day -day basis right maybe people don't have a half an hour to meditate maybe they've never meditated yeah. before right and and they've wanted to but they're intimidated by it 
just sit down and take 10 or five or what deep breaths. Right. And just start yeah. there. Right. It does. You'll exactly. feel the benefit even with that. Right. So don't, yep. don't be intimidated. And similarly, and I love what you just said about the, the travel and small incremental changes, because I, I do feel like, and we, we talk a lot about the, the power that travel has to inspire us to create change in our lives. Um, and yet we often hear people say, well, yeah, like people get intimidated because they don't like, they think that, oh, if, if in order to have a transformational experience, I've got to come home, quit my job, move to Nepal, shave my head, become a monk, <laughs> right? Like, and start a nonprofit, right? Like, and, it, and it's, and it's not right. More 99 point whatever percentage of the time it's, oh, that was really cool. I'm going to start meditating on a more regular basis, or I really enjoyed this experience of cooking classes and I'd like to start taking a cooking class every month. Right. Or yeah. fill in the blank. Right. And, and, and as these things sort of build up over time, right. The, you end up having a much more robust, fulfilling uh, experience of life. Right. And at the end of the day, that's yeah. what we're looking for. Right. Is the experience of yeah. being alive. Exactly. And it, all of these things are cumulative, all of these little, little changes and you know, 10 breaths, turns into 15 breaths, turns into 20 breaths, can turn into, you know, breathing at my break during lunch or, you know, these, uh, it, everything we do is, is cumulative. And even if we come back from a huge vacation and we don't keep any of the things that we said we were going to do, right. all of that healing, all of that knowledge is in here. It's in our experience and it's the seeds that are planted that may, you know, we may not one month after our trip, may not have, you know, everything, our life put together and wanted exactly what it is, but those seeds are planted in the mud and they will come up in time. And it's how do we tend to, to those seeds? You know, do we actually intentionally breathe? Are we committing five minutes a day to meditate? And that is the tending to the mud that, that will help the lotus to, to really blossom. Yeah. Yeah. So and it just uh, bits and bits and bits over time. We don't learn how to read in one day. We don't learn how to, you know, uh, drive a car in one day. And it's these, right. these little bits that we can cultivate in ourselves that allow us over time to, to really have the life that we want and the connection to ourselves and, and joy and peace and happiness, which is my biggest piece for it. Happiness. Yeah. That's why, yeah. you know, we're here to experience joy. We're not here to suffer. Right. Yeah, my, one of my favorite uh, singer songwriters has a his name is John Craigie, and he's got a song hmm. called "No Rain, No Rain, No Rose." Ah, so, yeah, yeah. Similar, yeah. similar concept, but yeah. but you're right, and, and it's it is it's these challenges, right? That what that we experience in life, and that we experience while we're traveling, that really, as you said, sort of help shape us into who we are. Right? These are opportunities to learn and grow, and it's just having about mm -hmm. that. It's about that sense of perspective, like okay. Like, yeah, this, this might suck right now. Like I get it. Like this sucks. Like I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be standing here in the pouring rain or I don't want to be going through a pandemic or I don't want to be worried yeah. about finances or, you know, blah, blah, fill in the million of other things that you don't, you know, don't want to be yeah. going through. But, you know, there's a great Joseph Campbell quote that I'm going to butcher. So I'm not going to even share it now, but it's essentially that nothing bad can happen to us. And I, I know that sounds very Pollyannish and all that stuff, but if you, if you attack it, if you look at it, if you embrace it, you go at it with courage, you go at it with heart, you go at it with perspective, right? Like you will learn from that. You will grow from that. You will be a better person at the, at the end of the day for it. Yeah. And uh, you know, somebody, again, if I knew who it was, I would quote them said, you know, we have to look at this as, as things are happening. We're taking things as granted, not for granted, right? So this is happening for us, not to us, whatever that might be, whether it's a, uh, a bus breaking down while you're in the middle of Nicaragua or a pandemic, right? Like at some level, this is happening for us. Yeah. And to find those pieces and to intentionally look for that. Cause sometimes you got to dig <laughs> and, and uh, that digging is, is worth it in the process of itself and learning how to change our perspective on, especially in the culture of the, of the United States where we've grown in, where we're just so averse to pain and suffering. When, if we embrace it, it's actually, it's a lot less painful and it can travel through us instead of getting stuck right, in us. Right, right, yeah. right. There's a, again, and like... the, the, the concept of no mud, no lotus is actually from the Buddha and then written a, a book by Thich Nhat Hanh, who's a Vietnamese monk um, who wrote this beautiful book. I encourage anyone to, to check it out. Um, 
and it's it's just so wonderful. Can I read a quote from it real quick? Yeah, yeah. But what's in the book? It's called No Mud, No Lotus. Oh, that's the name of the book. Okay, that's it. the name of the book. Yeah. Oh. And he's saying the uh, he says in it, it says it is the mud of the suffering that can create the lotus of understanding, compassion, and then I wrote and the ability to experience happiness. Mm. So it is the mud of the suffering that can create the lotus of understanding and compassion. I love it. So again, we can go on for a while and I know Rob has <laughs> got to hop off and, and do one <laughs> full time, but I, I do want to ask you one sort of practical thing, right? Absolutely. All of this makes tons of sense and it does require our ability to thoughtfully and mindfully respond versus unconsciously reacting. So one of the things that I've practiced and learned and still generally suck at, but I'm trying to get better at is being able to respond, right? and create that pause from like, you know, whatever the, the, the incident or the, whatever, what's the term I'm looking for, right? Mm-hmm. To stimulus and then response. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. So what, do you have any, any guidance or, or, or wisdom to share around how we can begin to cultivate that pause so that we can say, oh, I need to take a breath here or I need to disconnect here? Yeah, my, um, my answer is practice. And the more that we do it, the more that we mindfully breathe, the, the more those pauses, instead of not having a pause, instead of, and then it's a microsecond that we have to be able, and then it's a half a second, and then it's a full second that we have to be able to wait, pause, okay, and then respond. So it's in the little pieces every day of practice. It's in the little um, micro changes that we make in the in the awareness that we bring in um that creates a we call i i've called it, i've heard it called a pregnant pause so it's a it's a it's an impregnated with with awareness <laughs> with awareness right, 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 so right. we can keep those pauses and we can make them longer and longer and longer um before that stimulus response you know trigger reaction and um and in that is you know growth and maturity and ability to respond in the way that we truly want to, not just reactions from triggers of our past. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. We normally do rapid fire, but I think we're gonna, we're gonna wrap it up here because I, want one more, I have one more question that I wanna ask you and Absolutely. then we're gonna close it up and get out of here. Um, I'll ask it in two different ways and I'll, I'll let you choose how you wanna answer this, right? <laughs> one is um, what words uh, of wisdom would you leave with our our listeners. The other version of it is what, what have you learned or what advice would you give your younger self if you could go back 15 years? Mm. I would say the advice that I would give myself, uh, you know, many years ago is, is compassion and to be gentle with ourselves in the learning process and to be gentle with our hearts and to be gentle with our thoughts, to be gentle with those around us, um, to be kind and in the kindness and in the compassion, um, healing and learning can happen so much more easily. And, um, my mother used to say to me, she said, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. Which way do you want to do it? And I find that with compassion and with kindness, especially towards the self, um, things happen and unfold in a much more gentle, graceful, and easy way. So the more that we can be compassionate towards ourselves, towards those around us, um, even when we mess up or things are going crazy or a pandemic's happening, <laughs> that kindness to ourselves first and foremost um, is the most important lesson I've ever learned. Beautiful. Thank you. Words, words to look by. Um, <laughs> thanks for being here. Thanks for all of your wisdom. Thank you so much, Michael and, and uh, Robin. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, we'll we'll be sending out a bunch of resources. We'll be uh, we'll, we'll send out some links as well to some of the courses and programs at the Himalayan Institute, um, and people can stay tuned for some of the stuff that we're working on together uh, as well. Um, if anybody has any questions or wants to reach Hannah, um, please send an email to Hannah at explore-x.com. That's H-A-N-N-A-H at explore-x.com. Uh, any general questions about ExploreX can be sent to hello at explore-x.com. 
Uh, you can always follow us on social media at Go Explorer X. Um, and learn more about our membership and community platform at explorer-x.com slash join. Uh, next week, we're going to be joined by uh, one of my good friends, Maria Baltazzi. Uh, Maria has a, a doctorate in happiness. So we'll be talking about what that means and how she applies that to her life in terms of mindfulness and meditation and yoga and a million other things as well. So please be sure to join us next week for Maria. That'll be uh, at noon Pacific time next Wednesday. Um, until then, uh, Robin, thank you, Hannah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank really you all. Awesome. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great day. Thanks again.